Because we couldn't show the women and children's faces, we could only show the, their hands because you know, of confidentiality. Uh, we knew that hands had to be in the name. Actually, Hands of Hope has a good ring to it because in the long run, we're, we're hoping that you know, their lives improve and they're hoping that they can be on their own. So, Hands of Hope. This has morphed into something far greater than we even imagined when we first started. CPAP had this 24-hour hot night, and every year, because I, I would have at least two or three uh, students who were in situations of domestic violence, I would go and call CPAP's 24-hour hotline to make sure from year to year there's still someone answering that phone number. So we were thinking of like how to give back and because we knew CPAP so well, we were thinking of projects that might help raise money, do outreach, and also really put us in contact with the clients. We would be doing a craft that was actually nurturing their creativity and helping to them to see beyond their own difficulties. In the group setting where we do our jewelry making, they actually have to help each other because there's only two of us and there are many of them and we can't get to each person. The most amazing thing is they are so supportive of each other and I know that's because that's how it's modeled at CPAP. That they help each other. And it helps a lot that Naomi speaks some Japanese and I speak some Chinese. And so we try to make it, you know, home-like and not, not, not just a workshop. For us, it was rewarding, not just because of the jewelry, but, you know, we were telling people about CPAP in a way where we think there was some impact because there was a direct connection to the shelters because these are the workshops we do with the survivors and you know for for CPAF there there can't be a public face because the shelters are all confidential places but when they saw the jewelry and the, work, the workshop pictures that we had you know there was an immediate connection because I think most people know about domestic violence and sexual assaults but they don't know how they could, you know, make it better for women. I think that's why it's such a great outreach tool. Because we do it in a very informal environment. It's a house party. So people come and they're relaxed and want to have fun. But we're able to kind of get that information out to them. And, you know, we're not inviting them to a lecture or, you know, whatever. So they come and they just start asking, you know, about you know, what we do. And so it's just really a very, very good opportunity.